Hey, welcome back to the podcast. We are here with Timothy Morgan from GiverMarketing.com. And Timothy's message is that leaders who focus on their branding, their visibility, their promotion, and their nurturing are exponentially more successful than others who try all these random strategies built on faulty marketing assumptions. So we're going to talk about how you can give back, make a difference, make a change, and do all kinds of cool things. So Tim, glad to be talking to you. Robert, this is so fun. I've been looking forward to this ever since we set this up and got to know you a little bit and just getting to, getting to be able to connect here. So this is a privilege. Well, it's, it's a privilege right back at you. I mean, I don't connect with everyone, but like I was really impressed with our initial couple of communications and just your, your energy and your socializing. So let's get that to infect our audience, right? Let's get everyone to understand what you're all about. So what is your uniqueness? What's your passion these days? Well, gosh, I, I started off as a nonprofit leader, so uh, I ended up kind of getting to know community leadership and nonprofit world, and also en ended up starting some small businesses in Northern California. So part of my story is I shifted to the marketing world after having some kind of difficulties with my own uh, experiences around marketing and outreach and realizing that there needed to be a solution there for organizations, causes and companies doing good in the world. I wanted to help them. So ended up starting a signature process, became the highest rated reviewed marketing coach in the country. And, and that that's what I do now is I, I coach and consult around those four pieces that you were talking about. And uh, when it comes to branding, visibility, promotion and nurturing in that order, you can do it. You can take your brand to another level. You can take your organization to another level from a marketing standpoint doing that. So I love talking about those those pieces. If you'd like to go into that today, I'm glad to do that. Um, but that's a little bit of my story. And uh, becoming the highest rated reviewed marketing coach in the country was kind of a, a stepping stone to be able to do that. So, all right. So I'm making sure I have this kind of acronym ingrained in my head, right? B B P V N branding. Oh, shoot. I forgot already. The first one's branding, visibility, promotion, and nurturing. I need to like Correct. make that a sign, Correct. just like how you, you have your sign. And so as far as maybe just jumping in and, and getting something practical, like what do people need to focus on? When you see everyone out there doing things incorrectly, like nonprofits and otherwise, right? Not getting their message out in the right way. What do we need to stop doing and what do we need to start doing? All right. So check this out. I was just on with a, a, a client just a few minutes ago and right before the, our, our time together, and we were talking about branding and how important that is. So there's two kinds of brands, right? So if you're in the nonprofit world or if you're in a socially conscious business that are for profit, either way, your brand needs to be considered in this way. All the imagery and the language that you put out there, it represents an experience that you're giving your audience. And so that experience then equates to feelings and emotions and, and how they uh, really interact with you. And so one way to judge or 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 um, evaluate your brand is what are people saying about you when you're not in the room? We've heard this said by some different people over the years. It's true. So you want to take all of your imagery and your language and and evaluate how that's making people feel. One one really practical way to improve your brand immediately is to tell your origin story within your uh, marketing collateral, your marketing content, your 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 outreach messaging. Tell the story, the story I just told about me getting into the marketing space. That's that's a narrative that that can be remembered a little bit better uh, than a typical messaging campaign. So include your story in your branding strategy, and you'll you'll already start getting to the top top of the ladder when it comes to people being able to remember you. And so you make it sound so so simple, and I'm, I'm sure it is as long as we kind of can get out of our own, our own way. And so you're saying that, so there's these two things, right? That there's the idea of your brand and what people say about you when you're not in the room. And there's also fitting in your origin story. So that way there's kind of like a, a built-in like humble origins and it kind of leads into your, your current mission. And there's like fun with the, the struggles and the cause in there. And I'm sure it, it would help me especially understand uh, this process if you explained about maybe like someone who you helped with their origin story. Because I'm sure someone out there is saying, you know, I have a big mess in my head about all these ideas and things that I may be guessing about how my brand makes people feel. But as far as just getting getting that figured out, I'm sure you have some kind of story where you, you help someone else crack this nut. 
Yeah, I'm thinking about a client, Kingdom Warriors, that I've been highly involved with for years. And we always talk about what's the narrative? What's the origin story? And so they started off as this Web3 company that built these NFTs. And we've sold over three quarters of a million dollars worth of NFTs around this community that they built. Well, their story started evolving. Now, now we've inc- well, now we've produced a movie, a film called Legends of Eladria. And so this this experience that they've had over the last it's only been a year. They're like a baby company, but they've done over a million dollars in revenue. We're producing a film, all this other stuff. That's a part of the narrative now. So that everywhere they go, they need to talk about. We started here. We had this aha moment that we could produce a film based on this that was happening previously, kind of our background. And then now we help our community do this. And so that's the formula is you take your background with an aha moment and you let people know how and why you help your who. Whoever your audience is, how and why you you help them uh, or why and how you help them. It's not what you do, it's why and how you do it. That's what people really want to hear in as far as an origin story. Uh, Like, for example, uh, our company, the Giver Marketing Network, we have all these marketing professionals that help come and support the coaching that I do, the coaching that some other people do as well. How and why we help the marketing professionals out there is because we want an army of Marketing do-gooders, helping causes and companies, shaping culture for good. That's our big vision. And that's that's our mission to be able to help these organizations really take their branding, visibility, promotion, and nurturing to another level. And that that's that's who we help. That's how we help them. We provide a community to do that. And that's a little bit of, of, of my story as it's evolving as well. So if you can continually update your, your story and share that and help People walk that journey with you. Um, You can do it through books. You can do it through social media. You can do it through podcasting like we're doing right now. You can do all these different ways, but get that narrative out there. Otherwise, your brand will be, it'll be moderate at best. And so the the thing that, that I'm always like working to wrap my head around as far as like the, the branding and the marketing is like this repetition idea, right? Like even when you were talking about uh, like figuring out your origin story, you were saying a little bit like like revisit it, and like over time you'll figure out a, a like a better way to shape it. And then when doing the the videos and the social posting and the podcasting, it's a lot of the the repetition. And have you ever come across any of these organizations who kind of struggle with that? As far as like there's you know they they're doing all this good in the world, right? They're doing all this like volunteer work and making a change, but then there's also kind of the the time to switch gears. And focus on this promotion and this repetition. So, I mean, what's what's it like as far as you go to some organization and you say, here's what needs to be done to do all this marketing. Do you encounter like resistance or any kind of struggles as far as them implementing that? Yeah, that's a promotion question. So it's in that bucket, right? Of how often to promote, how to promote, what's the kind of the rhythm or or the frequency of promotion. It's, it's a great question. I, I would back up and and kind of mention this first okay so once you have your branding dialed in your next step is not promotion i know that's not what you're alluding to but i'm just i'm just kind of mentioning this to the audience because it's a common it's a common next step to go from from uh your brand is dialed you're looking good your story your narrative everything's kind of sharp language imagery is all dialed in around that that brand that you want the world to see, and then you start promoting. Well, the next step is actually visibility. You want people to be able to find you online, and that's how we define it. You can you could say search engine optimization. You can say findability. We, we call it visibility. It's all the same stuff. You're basically making it easy for your audience to find you when the time comes or when they want to find you. So that sets the stage for very high return on investment when it comes to promotion. Oftentimes what happens, we start promoting before we're visible and we wonder why the 
return on investment is not there. Well, it's because we didn't do the other two steps before it. So what we've seen over the years in consulting with thousands of organizations is branding, then make yourself findable, visible, search engine optimizationable, however you want to say it. Make sure people can find you on Google and other social platforms and others. There's other places too that you want to be listed. Um, shoot, you can go to givermarketing.com slash visibility and there's a free tool for you just to find out if you're visible. So it's our website slash visibility basically, okay? So then you get to promotion, which is the, your question of frequency. Try to get as frequent as you can without bothering people or without being too pitchy. So here's here's what our rule of thumb for like social media, for example. That's just one example of promoting. 80% value, that could be humor, education. It could be all, all it could be uh, interviews. It could be all different kinds of value that you're giving that isn't really asking anything. You're depositing into your audience, some kind of value you're giving. And then the 20% of your posts or your um different content that you're putting out there in different ways, 20% can be the ask. So it's the 80-20 rule, Pareto's principle, oftentimes we call it, but those 20% of posts can generate a lot of revenue or appointments, um, but 80% of the time, you're just trying to bless your audience. You're trying to give value. So that that's what I would say as far as what to, to post. As far as frequency, don't just rely on one channel. And by that, I don't I don't mean just social media. I mean, there's other, like, if you're going to post something on social media, let's say it's LinkedIn, um, then go ahead and repurpose that on other social media um, outlets, yes. But don't forget a quick email, follow-up, maybe a few days later or a few hours later, depending on what it is. Use all different forms. Text messaging is big and hot right now with reminding people of what's coming up or don't forget to tune in here, that kind of thing. Use multiple channels so that it doesn't feel like you're actually pounding them on the head with one channel. Don't, don't get over uh, fixated on one channel. That'll help. Yeah, and this is great. So I'm I'm getting a better map of your process because sometimes someone says, oh, here's some ideas, but you're saying, okay, branding, then visibility, then promotion, then nurturing. It's a logical step-by-step -step process. So that way we're not skipping steps. We're not jumping ahead. First, figure out your branding, your message, your story, then visibility, search engine optimization, and everything that goes with that. And then promotion, which is this uh, consistent uh, updating on these different social platforms so that way you're not just married to one channel you're doing the text messaging you're doing the email marketing that way you're you're not overloading on one area and you're not putting all your eggs in one basket so we said branding visibility promotion and nurturing so what does that that nurturing step look like now that we've kind of put these other parts of the foundation in place uh now the nurturing phase what does that entail for you Fun, I mean, fun little story about the nurturing piece. It wasn't originally in there. And now I'm writing a book about all this stuff and all these kind of things. But but originally it was just branding, visibility, promotion. This is how you market. Well, we were generating so many appointments and leads and conversations and engagement for our clients. They're like, how do we follow up with these properly without losing momentum? And so we we created the nurturing module, which basically walks through like, one, one of the premises of the nurturing module, which is it's basically follow up in our modern era. OK, it's not follow up like we used to think about 10, 20 years ago. It's nurturing and follow up with empathy in our modern era. OK, so think like there's several steps and uh, the statistics tell us that if you're able to connect with your audience more than five times, that's when 80% of the decision meetings come or the decision metrics start developing or the, the decision moments start happening is after five trust building interactions. Some would say seven or 11, but I'm just gonna keep it real, okay? At least a minimum of five touches in different ways. We talked about text messaging, social media, we talked about email, we talked, if you can follow up in a classy way without bothering somebody, 
more than five times. And they're like, oh, they really are paying attention to me, but they're not annoying me. Then you've done a successful nurturing campaign. So we highly recommend things like um, just when you're doing an introduction, video or even in person on the phone, um, make sure that you're sharing that origin story so they remember that. Your introduction needs to be memorable. Don't pitch anything. First time you meet somebody, don't pitch anything. Like when we met, Robert, what what's the what's the first thing we did? We swapped stories, got into some like, what are you up to? What am I up to? Can I see if there was some alignment. And then what did you do? Hey, I think you'd be a good fit on the podcast. You're offering value immediately in that business relationship. That's a form of nurturing immediately. You're giving something of value. And that's one of our, our tenets of follow-up is give something of value with really very little or no strings attached, okay? Um, there's other, you know, email. I mentioned a few of them before. Email a follow-up after a meeting or after an appointment or after an experience. Making sure that you can stay connected in multiple ways instead of just one or two. Which is completely doable in this day and age of there's different social networks there. I mean, you're making me think that like in, in, me, in the past year or so, I've I've made like a deliberate effort to every week. I don't know how much, how many minutes per week, but I'm just like, I've got some sort of a like a block of time where I'm like, I'm going to send this per person A's book over to person B. Or like uh, even after we met, uh, your Sam uh, introduced me to a different podcast guest. And then earlier today, we scheduled for each other's podcast. So like just that idea of just the, the little nudge, the little push, knowing that. Uh, and so I guess an area where I, my, my, it hurts my brain is where I tell myself, well, there's this thing called lag time, or there's like the doing all the little uh, small tasks up front, knowing that they won't all pay off. And it's not healthy to think in terms of like, what do I do that pays off? But like doing enough activity, knowing that if only 5% of this paid off, then that would be huge. And so I've, I've just been trying to be like, oh yeah, let me check in with that person or this social post reminded me of that other person. And so can you maybe, uh, maybe unpack that a little bit? Because I'm sure there's like that, that mental uh, co cognitive dissonance, right? Where you're saying, well, I, the one extreme is rapid fire and just like constantly on social media. And then the other extreme is spending all day on like a proposal for one person. So how do you find that middle ground where you're like, I'm doing enough volume, but I'm also do, putting in like the personalized attention as well? Yeah, I think there's two types of networking that could be considered in this conversation. I think there's the base level networking where you're basic you're basically experimenting to see kind of what's what kind of return is going to come from maybe going to a like a, a leads group or a networking group or something and meeting some different people. That's fine. That's totally great. We all need to start there. We all need to practice and get our networking skills and um and just uh, experiences up to place where we need to be. Then there's a, I think there's a higher level of networking where you're not necessarily always asking for a transaction in the traditional sense. Like, hey, will you buy my thing? I think, I think doing things like referral ping pong where you, go, where you give each other referrals and then if and when you need each other's services, you go ahead and just buy it or recommend it to a friend. But then there's also power partnerships that are so prevalent in, in our networking now because I have power partners all over the world now because of the internet. It's just amazing. We send each other resources and referrals and introductions and things all the time. If you get enough of those people in your corner and you're, you know, you're kind of in their corner, you you really won't. I think I think I had like 300 introductions last year just on my personal calendar. That doesn't include for all the team members and Sam and all, everybody else. Does that make sense? Like if you can go from onesie, twosie, like, hey, will you buy my thing? Which there's nothing wrong with that. You got to start somewhere and get, get practice to, hey, do you want to swap resources and, and introductions? 
to, hey, do you want to form some kind of joint venture or do something together that would actually make sense long term? I think that's smart. I think there's some activity that's short-term activity and there's some activity that's long-term activity. And that includes marketing and networking. And they are, uh, we, we define marketing as pre-sales communication. So I love anything, it. anything that's happening where you're communicating, even like right now, this is a type of outreach, uh, adding value, marketing, connecting. These are all activities, communication of any kind that is before the sale. 80% of what we do in business is marketing related. And then everything else is either, you know, HR or operations or sales. But a, a lot of everything else we do, it, the pre-sales communication, that's a big part of everything. All of our appointments, all of our discovery calls, those are not sales meetings yet. We have to earn the right to get to a sales meeting. Sales meetings should be like 15 minutes, 30 minutes maybe. Marketing, it might have taken months or even years sometimes to get to the point where they're ready to have a serious meeting like that. Sometimes it happens quick, but that's only for the 1% to 3% that are ready right now. What about the other 97%? They they need need more educating need need more marketing. They need more nurturing, like you just said. There so, you go. So really, uh, the numbers you want to think we want to think about as as small, you know, nonprofit leaders or business leaders is one to three percent are ready to buy right now, generally, or donate if you're in the nonprofit space, ready to contribute or commit in some way right now. And then there's another like 10, 15, sometimes twenty something percent that will eventually contribute or buy. So the question from, from, from the nurturing standpoint, that last piece, the gold is in the follow-up, right? So that last piece becomes your real money maker once your systems start getting really dialed in. That's why most businesses will stay at a certain level because they're not willing to take the front end pain of setting up their nurturing systems for the long-term revenue and and impact that that will have on their organization. And that goes for nonprofits and for-profits both. We're, we're all in the people business, man. We're trying to help people with our product or service, trying to help them save time, uh, do something better, cheaper, faster, do something that will benefit them. Everybody's asking one question, what's in it for me? Well, th this is powerful stuff. And, and so basically what, what I'm hearing from you is, like it's always a funnel, right? It's and there's like people are kind of on different levels along the process, and the kind of the the earliest level might be like you're meeting someone new, might be at a networking event. You're not there with any expectations. You're just there like seeing like okay, who who is promising as far as like a future like maybe a sale, but maybe like a referral source or like someone to do a swap with, and then that relationship can kind of get like walked along a path. And you just kind of see how far it goes. And so you kind of have this, this thought of, okay, like, uh, how wide is it? And how deep is it? Like, how many people are kind of in my funnel? And then the ones that are promising, whatever promising means as far as the nurturing, those are the ones that you kind of work on more, but you don't necessarily neglect the early part of the of the, of the funnel because then it, it dries up and it's like, it's a lot to think about, right? It's a lot of like abstracting, but what's good about your your teaching here is that you kind of put labels on things, right? You put these terms on things because I don't know about you, but it drives me crazy when this whole networking kind of referral instructing, it's like all this, all these vague terms, right? It's all this, oh, well, put yourself out there and, and you know, get on some calls and talk to people. And I'm like, that's great. And I'll, I'll do that. But then when you have these terms like the the, the referral sources or the, or the nurturing or the follow-ups, you say, do this number of follow-ups in this way and this many times, that's more kind of practical and doable, at least as far as my mind. And so you you do all this, this good in the world, you help these uh, nonprofits, you help get the messaging out. Uh, is there something that you see that's not being done right as far as this branding, visibility, promotion, nurturing process? You, it drives you crazy. It's not being done right but people aren't talking about it. Is there something like that that you see just yeah, this I, not I spoken could, of mistake? Yeah, I could share it from a macro level, like marketing in general. Um, first of all, um, 
anybody who's in the sales, marketing, or business consulting world, please stop pretending like everybody is your personality. There are introverts, there are extroverts, there are disc profiles, there's Myers-Briggs, there's all these different personality types. We're all wired differently. Please don't treat your audience like they all have to be like you from a personality standpoint. They call that personality projecting. Don't do that, okay? And if you run across somebody who's doing that, they're assuming that you're you're, you're going to have the same level of energy and the same this and same personality and the same disposition. Run from them. They're the fake gurus that make you feel bad for not being them. It's not a good idea. You don't want to be around people like that. You feel you start getting negative energy just from being around these people. So first of all, if you're one of those people, stop doing that. And if you happen to be around some of those people, well, just slowly exit the, the room, okay? That's one thing that I would like to see change in the marketing and the sales and the kind of the business world. Um, there's, there's a couple of other things that might be worth considering as well. You, you really need to take a look at your actual product and ask yourself, is this worth marketing? And if it is worth marketing, then begin forming a vision, assessing your challenges, and put into place 12-month goals. And if somebody's not asking you those kind of questions when you're talking about your business and your marketing and different things like that, then they're, they're really probably just trying to sell you something or pitch you something just because they happen to know about it. So you want a consultative or approach to, to working with marketing professionals. So and if they're asking you questions like, what's your vision or your dream? What do you want to see happen long-term? What are your current challenges? What are your 12-month goals? Those are good signs. Those are not meant to be some bait and switch or some weird voodoo or neuro-linguistic programming. They're just real questions. And you can tell when somebody's being authentic about that. Uh, one of the other things I'd like to stop seeing is people pitching me on LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, text messaging, emails, and other places before they've gotten to know my story. That would be nice, wouldn't it? It, it would be, yes. Yeah. And and so and so I like how there's something you phrase in there about how you're saying like um you're just putting these ideas out there, right? Like you're like if someone if some of this uh resonates with with what you're saying, someone can just kind of absorb some of these ideas as far as not everyone thinks like you. And you should be thinking about this kind of bigger picture, these 12 month goals. And I'm sure that in the, the Web3 and the NFTs, you've seen a lot of this real scary, shady stuff where there's yep. not really thinking about the big picture. And even like, you know, a few days ago, you asked me about these 12 month goals and it kind of knocked me over. And then and especially because you think, well, you know, you wonder like, well, what are these uh, you mentioned gurus before, but you think, man, like what is like. Gary Vaynerchuk or like Damon John or whoever, when they're behind closed doors, what do they talk about? They're probably talking about their 12 month goals and changing the world. They're not being petty. They're not uh, complaining about people or saying how terrible their life is. They're talking about these real uh, future accomplishments and their hopes and dreams that they want to do the, the positivity. And I think that we can all pick up on uh, some of these, these many big ideas that you're sharing with us. And so uh, now that you've Practice what you preach, right? You've kind of earned the, the right, so to speak, to share your origin story, share some ideas, and now tell us what you have going on. So can you tell us about uh, these fun projects of yours that we should be paying attention to, such as the, the Giver Network and others? What do you have going on? What's the website? Yeah, givermarketing.com is a place to start. But we have a special network for marketing professionals who it's kind of a kind of a, a we don't make a ton of money on this. We There's a small membership fee just to keep everybody honest, but it's really a place for marketing professionals to come together like you and me and collaborate, work on projects together and increase each other's revenue. One of my goals is to help each team member double and triple their revenue as soon as possible. We've seen some team members 10X their revenue in the network. And it's not all about revenue, but it's a fun metric, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's fun to measure so we can have more fuel in the tank for our mission. 
And our big vision with the Giver Marketing Network is to basically help causes and companies shape culture for good using our marketing superpowers. And that that's really where, where, where our big vision is. And our mission is to bring positive attention to those organizations. And if we can do that and continue to welcome more marketing specialists to the tribe and make some more money together, impact and culture for good, I'm a, I'm a happy boy. And that, that's, that's kind of why I get up in the morning and uh, it, it really connects to what I want to see the world look like for my kids, my grandkids. I had a coach ask me one time, is what you're doing going to affect people 400 years from now? That's a tough question. And it doesn't necessarily need to be this big grandiose, I'm going to change the world. Well, it could affect five people, 10 people, a handful of, you know, just a certain amount of people over the course of time and just keeps rippling doesn't need to be this big grandiose vision it could be something a little bit more moderate but that ripple effect is extremely powerful and i i love that question it, it got me thinking for sure did you arrive at an answer or are you still working on that yeah i think it helped us fine tune and hone in the fact that our our marketing network is really more of a movement i mean our big goal for the next 10 years is a thousand team members so those thousand marketing professionals are going to impact culture for good and that will that will have a lasting legacy effect for sure awesome well these are some big ideas and for for some people it may be scary and foreign and new but that that's a good sign right that means that up until now maybe some of our watchers and listeners have been playing in in mediocre land which is fine temporarily but maybe it is time now to step up and stand up and to really pursue something bigger than ourselves and to think about that vision. And it might not come overnight. And the answer to what will you do that will change the world in 400 years, that might take a while as well. But uh, like we need to get there somehow, right? We need to be thinking about what can I do that's bigger than myself. So that way my life has a real purpose and meaning. And especially in those difficult times, when we feel like giving up or it seems to not be working, we have that motivation to press forward. And as you as you and I both know, what also helps as far as the pressing forward is the community, the, the mastermind, the people in your network who are helping you out. And so if someone wants to look into Giver Marketing Network, what's the web address? Yeah, I would go to givermarketing.com, start there, uh, set up a time with one, uh, free consultation with one of our coaches, and we'll just go from there and see if if there's an alignment of some kind, swap stories, if nothing else, and just see where you're at. Maybe we can resource you in some way, point you in the right direction. If you're a marketing professional, we'll probably invite you to check out our network. And either way, there's so many resources that we have because of kind of the business model that is in place. Uh, we're basically the highest rated reviewed marketing network of its kind on the planet. So you're going to want to, you're going to want to ask us as many questions as you can in that in that time so just grab a time uh from givermarketing.com website that'd be fine you're doing something right if you're the highest rated so givermarketing.com and i like what you said in there about the uh swapping stories and that's something you told me a, a couple of weeks ago when we met you said that you know there's there's this idea of hopping on a call with someone and then you think well why am i even doing that or why am i what am i telling someone i'm getting on a call for and you say we're getting on a call with swap stories and maybe something will come of but maybe not, but just it's good to make that effort to, to put in some time in doing that. And the the reason for meeting, just swapping stories with someone who you can connect with. And so the very next step for you to swap stories with Timothy and his team is givermarketing.com. And so we're ra wrapping up, winding down our, our episode here, Timothy. And as, as you know, being in marketing and in these industries, it's good to end with a bang. It's good to end with a soundbite. So what do you have in soundbite land for us? Do you have a favorite quote, lesson, advice you wish you gotten years ago? What do you have as far as just like putting a, a big old hefty wrapper on this conversation? Hey, I, one of my favorite authors is Bob Burke. And one of the things that he said over the years is people love to do business with they, those that they know, like, and trust. And so I would say that that is one of those quotes that many of us know, but it's worth remembering and hearing again, and maybe even memorizing. Uh, he wrote a book called The Go-Giver, 
and it's a big influence on even the name of our company. So God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much, Robert, for having me. And we look forward to connecting soon. No like and trust. I love it. And the play for some reason, my camera cut out. No one what happened, but we're perfectly imperfect. So give her what? Give her marketing.com. Apologies. Yep. Give, yep. Her mar give her marketing.com. And uh, we'll talk more about how to share your story. We'll practice swapping stories, see if there's some alignment. And we're always looking for mutual benefit. I think that's kind of the differentiator between us and maybe a typical marketing company that says, hey, we'll sell you this. And then you might get this in return. Uh, we really want to understand your story, your vision for your company, your organization, and we can go from there. So that'll be good. Fabulous. GiverMarketing.com. We will see you there.